The capacitor in this problem has plates that are separated by 2.30 millimeters. I'll call that capital D because it's the larger of the two values that occur in this problem. The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is epsilon naught times the plate area divided by the separation D. We're told the energy stored in this capacitor and we're asked what happens to that energy in two different situations. The energy stored in a capacitor is one half times the charge times the voltage, which we can rewrite using the definition of capacitance, or rewrite again, eliminating the voltage V. In part A, the plate separation is halved while the battery remains connected so that the voltage V is constant. That makes it convenient to use this middle expression. I'll write that expression twice, once for the new separation and once for the old separation. For the new separation, call it little d, we have one half times the new capacitance times the voltage squared, and for the original, we have one half times the original capacitance times the voltage squared. If we divide these two equations, everything constant in the numerator and denominator cancels, and we can solve for the new energy stored in the capacitor and it works out to the ratio of the separations, large d over little d, times the original energy. So we have twice the original energy, which is 16.8 joules. In part b, the battery is disconnected before the plate separation is halved. With the battery disconnected, no charge can enter or leave the plates, so Q is now constant. That makes it convenient to instead use this last expression. I'll again write two expressions for the stored energy, once with the new separation, and then again for the original separation, and divide these two equations canceling everything that is the same in the numerator and denominator. That shows us that the new stored energy is now the opposite ratio of the separations times the original stored energy. It's one half the original stored energy, giving us 4.19 joules.